Hi everyone, welcome to Elements of Art Space. So today we're going to talk about what space is and how it affects art pieces that we look at. So what is space? Space is the emptiness or an area between, around, above, below, or within objects or forms in a piece of art. Space can make a two-dimensional piece, you know, like a flat piece of paper actually look three-dimensional by giving it a feeling of depth depending on how you arrange the different elements on your page. So smaller objects in a space seem farther away and larger objects seem much closer. So how an artist uses space or chooses not to use space can really help define a lot about the work. So there's different kinds of space. There's positive space, which is space created by an image or a sculpture. And then there's negative space, which is the space around and between parts of an image or a sculpture. Symmetrical space is when the piece has equal balance on both sides of the artwork. And asymmetrical space means there's no visual balance on both sides of the piece. So it's, you know, it's not like mirrored or evenly weighted or distributed in any way. So two-dimensional space has width and height, but it feels flat, where three-dimensional space has height, width, and depth. Space can be created either by linear or atmospheric perspective, which means, you know, having things look closer or farther away. You can create it by overlapping fig figures or shapes, and you can do varying sizes of shapes. You also are able to do, to show space by value or shading. So you can make some, look something look three-dimensional or closer or farther away, depending on how you shade or add different levels of value. So I'd like to go ahead and look at some specific art pieces now. Andrew Wythe's Christina's World is an absolutely stunning piece. So both the girl in the field and the houses in the background create positive space. The field surrounding the girl and the sky surrounding the houses compose of negative space. So you can see both positive and negative space in this piece of artwork. In Ellsworth Kelly, uh, this is an asymmetrical space and what it does is it draws the viewer's eye to a particular part of the art, giving more importance to one section of the canvas than the other. So take a look at this and, and see where your eye is drawn and maybe you can figure out where the artist was trying to get you to look. Ferdinand Ledger, um, his use of positive and negative space the final result is that the white areas play an equally important role in the design as the black marks do. He went ahead and used both that positive and negative space to make this whole composition complete. Now Frank Stella, we saw some Frank Stella in another art lesson, Art Elements of Shape. And in this piece is here because this is a good example of symmetrical space and it's giving equal balance to all parts of the canvas. So this is a perfect example of that symmetry giving balance and different weight and the same weight across the whole piece. Henry Moore, reclining figure, this is a sculpture. So the artist used space, so the holes, to draw the attention to the other parts of the sculpture. So the eye perceives the relationship between the space and the tangible form. So those holes really do draw in your eye, but then it kind of leads you to the other parts in the flow motion of this sculpture. So Louise Burgess. This is a three-dimensional sculpture. I'm not going to lie to you. It's always kind of creeped me out. And it can be viewed easily from all angles, including underneath the piece. And what I find interesting here is also the shadow of the piece on the ground, I think, adds even more to this creepiness of this strange spider-looking piece. But the height of it is really what makes something very interesting. So Paul Cezanne in Basket of Apples, 
Cezanne created a sense of space and depth in the still life by overlapping images. Also, the objects on the lower part of the canvas appear closer, while the objects placed higher on the canvas appear further back. So the white cloth is much closer to us than the wine bottle. So when you are looking at different pieces of art, we can go ahead and analyze these pieces of art for space. We can ask ourselves, is the space in the art piece completely filled? Is there any empty space? What kind of space do you see? What parts of the piece are positive space and what parts are negative space? What are the shapes created by the space? How is the space arranged in the piece? Is it heavier on one side, on the bottom, on the top? Is it equal throughout? How does the artist use the space to depict depth? And what kind of technique has the artist used to create this space? Does the artist use space to express some kind of feeling or sentiment? Maybe something really far away could make them or make the viewer think of something lonely. Okay, so now we're going to talk about different follow-up ideas that you can do. This is just a space study. It's similar to a line study. And it's just, you take a paper, you divide it into squares, and you just experiment with space. And one thing that I love about this is that all of the different rows have a different kind of idea or theme that that work is centered around. So I think it's really interesting. I love the top row. So these next images are practicing using negative and positive space. So you need two pieces of paper, one white, one black. You draw a design on one of the papers, and then you transfer that design onto the other paper. Similar to the mandala transfer technique that you saw. If you haven't seen that yet, go watch that video. And you then cut out the image, and you paste the black pieces on the white paper and the white pieces on the black paper to make that negative and positive mirroring image. This negative space piece is actually kind of cool. I'm not sure if you can tell, but those are face profiles, which means um, a face turned to the side. And when you put them together like that, mirroring each other, they kind of also look like a vase. I think it's a kind of cool, sneaky way of practicing. These are similar to the ones before. However, instead of using black and white paper, this one is a magazine. And this is just a ton of different beautiful colors cut out and then pasted on black paper. This one and the next one, people watercolored some paper and then cut out designs like a hand. Or here they just cut out different lines and then spaced that paper out to make a cool composition. And this one's really cool. Somebody just made a cool design, traced out a bunny, and then they put that over their design to create that negative space. This piece here shows atmospheric space. So the things that are closer to us are darker and the things that are lighter are actually farther away set back into the piece. You can also see that the dark pieces that are meant to be closer are, are at the bottom of the pic image where the pieces that are supposed to be farther away are at the top of the pieces. And finally, these last two pieces are showing balance in the piece. So when you look at this one, the left piece is not balanced, is it? All the weight is there on the bottom left corner, where the second piece with lots of orange is balanced out in all four directions very nicely. This piece, which is actually a quilt, is also showing an unbalanced design. I think what would also be interesting is to play with that balance even more by putting all of the dark colors on the left and all of the light colors on the right showing a heaviness also being able to use colors and that's what we're going to look at in our next art lesson when we look at elements of art color so that is the end of our lesson i am really excited to see the artwork that you end up making please enjoy make all sorts of different things and send me some pictures if you would like and i hope you guys have a great day and i'll talk to you later bye